My name is Kathleen McCarthy, K-A-T-H-L-E-E-N-M-C, capital C-A-R-T-H-Y. Thank you for being here. What would you like me to know? Honorable Judge Dora and court members. My name is Kathleen McCarthy, and I'm a very close friend of Jesse's. We met two years ago when I was sentenced to four and a half months at WCJ at the age of 70 years old. One week in, I was placed in pod three and was quickly informed about some of the inmates. And first was Jessie. She was known as the Visine killer and was awaiting her murder trial. Somewhat scared, I watched a lot and saw that some inmates treated her as a human being and others as a disease. Not very nice. Jessie pretty much kept to herself feeling like a leopard and really not knowing how the jail works, especially at my age, Jessie approached me and asked if I'd like to sit at her table, share meals with her, play cards. I accepted. Throughout the next four and a half months, we ate together, played cards together, prayed together. She and I became almost like mother and daughter. Well, with more like grandma, granddaughter. And between our many hours of conversations consisting of politics, religion, our family, pets, friends, her case, her prior bad acts, and likes and dislikes, I got to know the real Jessie. She is a caring, giving person. Many women who come in and go out of that pod have nothing, no family, no money, no friends to help and support them. The food in the jail is absolutely horrible, and I didn't eat much of it at all. Thank God I have a family that cared and could help me out with eye cares and money on my account. The people with nothing were recipi recipients of gifts from Jesse, every last one of them. It was from sometimes body wash, combs, cups, ramen noodles from an eye care, paper, pens, use of the phone of her money to call their loved ones and their kids. After watching her do that, I in turn helped while she and I did this continuously for the time I was there, and she continues to do it today. She also plays peacemaker, if she can, with 25 to 30 women in one area, and you saw how small that area is. The dynamics in there is not always conducive to peace and harmony. I know she had to calm me down on more than one occasion. I truly have never lived like that, nor been treated like that ever. Jesse has been through all of this and still helps people survive and keep them from losing their mind. Well, while there, Jesse started a nightly devotion before bed. She starts with something from the daily bread, a Bible reading, or something she was given by the people who hold the Sunday services in prayer groups. She attends weekly. These nightly devotions are still being done every night as of today. Throughout Jesse's time here, she has worked tediously and tirelessly reading over and over her discovery, writing letters for help for her defense, trying to keep her faith through this good and bad news and multiple attorney changes. She prays for the best outcome, knowing she did not kill Lynn. The conviction was a total blow for her, her friends, and her family. As devastated as she is, she continues to work on her own behalf to get an appeal. Her, mo her mother and I talk and work together in any way we can to assist Jesse. Jesse and I speak daily, if not more than once a day, and I visit her weekly and have, and have done so since I have been out these last two years. I am asking the court not to sentence her to life without parole. 
even though the jury found her guilty, I believe that she does not deserve that severe of punishment. I would wish that the court be lenient as they can and as the law, law allows. Thank you, and God bless us all. Thank you. My name is Jennifer Flower, J-E-N-N-I-F-E-R, Flower, F-L-O-W-E-R. Um, I'm Jesse's mother. Um, I have a letter I would like, I have two letters I would like to read that were written from Lynn, and then I have some things to add to that. Jenny, I have known, how to, I don't know how to begin this. I know you are going to have the hardest time when I am gone. You were my rock You, when my mom passed. You have no idea how much that meant to me. You know things were always difficult between my mom and I. I let her get the best of me, and I have had to live with my mistakes that have been suffocating the air out of me. I have hit a point of no return and cannot live like this anymore. I am a liar, a cheat, and a fraud, and I am tired of it all. I still remember our pool lake days baking in the oil, drinking away, paddling around from bar to bar. I wish I was still living by or on the water. I hate this condo and always have. Jenny, know that I, am, I have tried. I have tried so hard to be like I used to be. I don't know exactly what happened to me, but it's too much now. I can't fix this. I am so lost. My biggest worry is for Jessie. She has been seen me through so much and been with me through so much. I don't even know how to tell you or if she has ever told you any of it. She has kept all my secrets and has told so many lies for me. I don't know if anyone will understand. She has been here through it all, screaming at me, crying with me, laughing and taking care of me. I have watched her grow up and I am so proud of the woman she has become. I wish I got to meet her boyfriend, Scott. He seems like a keeper. I have never seen her so happy. I only wish for her happiness. I hope for a wedding and kids of her own too. I know she adores his and I have seen the pictures I hope she has an easier and a better life than us. And maybe even you will finally find Mr. Wright, too. I wish everything I wish everything wasn't such a struggle for you. You deserve so much more in life. I know you and Jesse will be just fine over time. Take a trip together and bring a pile of my ashes with. I wish you I wish I would have been able to take you on a trip or even get that side-by-side -side house we always talked about. Jenny, thank you for being my best friend. You know me and goodbyes. I will see you someday walking around the yellow brick road or in our case, in sand on the beach. Love, Lynn. September 3rd, 2018. Attached also is um, some additional pages that she had added says, um, this is October 1st, 2018. I, Lynn Hernan, being of sound mind and body, want to state I have changed my will in 2018 to take Anthony Poza off to not being included in my life as Jessie is. She has done so many things for me and has been my caretaker. I have not been, I have not heard from Anthony in over almost a year, parentheses, as far as I'm concerned, he does not exist. He is selfish. I only feel, I only hear from him because he is in the will. I feel like Kareen makes him keep in contact with me so often. I also removed Kareen, parentheses. She hasn't been my friend in years. I do not know if they even care about me anymore or just my money. They are fake, blank, phony friends that I have cut blank out of my life, parentheses, as a backup, all except for a few items to go to Jesse, the Jeep to Jenny. I know there is going to be some issues with property and Jim and Keith, parentheses. Nobody was there for me except my true family, blank the rest. I owe nothing. I owe them nothing. They only will care about what they get. 
I know too well. End of parentheses. Jesse has a list as to who gets what. I left everything with instructions. Uh, I'm sorry to leave this way, but I give up. Jesse and Jenny, I love you both. You were both always there for me. Thank you. Sorry, Mom. I will. I never meant to hurt you. I just want to see my dad again. I am so sick of being sick. I don't want to be in pain anymore. I hide in my house all day because I can't function daily. Nobody talks to me, but I don't know. They will come running to take my things. Ha ha. Blank them all. Parentheses. But nobody can even call me on my birthday except for Jenny, Jesse. Can't count on Anthony to take me to the doctor or even check on my on me. Blank ass phony friends. Exclamation mark. I don't want nobody to get a thing of mine that isn't written for them on my list. F that. F my, jo uh, F my list. Nobody gets blank. I changed my mind. Jesse, do not write the following. Do not follow any list. Do not give anyone anything. I do not want anyone in my condo taking what they want. I want them to get nothing. Sell everything you can. There's so many bills. Parentheses. Remember only pay creditors who file claims. End of parentheses. Get help from the attorneys. Gather all the paperwork. Do not let anyone take over my condo. Sell it. Tell Jim you're taking his blank to court for every penny he owes me money for. He pisses me off and his drunk bitch. Sorry. I have done all and could no do no more. Jenny and Jesse get all my shit and nobody, sorry, <laughs> and nobody better stop them. Someone please contact the list. Tell all to get blank. Follow my instructions. I'm headed out on my own terms and how I want. Like my mom, I have changed my will of my own free will and to what I should have done sooner. I did not write it myself because clearly it looks like blank like me. Parentheses. I had Jessie rewrite it in a parentheses. I know Jessie, and she doesn't want to do any, any of this. Funeral, bills, condo, sale, etc. But she's the one I trust and known, knows my stuff. Remember, Jessie, I love you and will always be there with you. I know how hard this is going to be on you. Take care of your mom and make sure you put down my cats with me. Sorry, it's my time. Don't Give them blank. It's my decision. Love, Lynn. Um, so I'm, I'm, this is a letter for me writing to, I guess, everyone that is here today. And sorry the jurors couldn't be here either. <laughs> um, obviously, my name is Jennifer Flower. I'm Justy's mother and was Lynn's best friend. I would also like to say this is the first chance I've been able to speak publicly. I would like to say this has been extremely hard five years for all and even longer for my daughter and I. As we have been dealing with years of being there and caring for Lynn, as we really have not been able to mourn the loss of Lynn, being that instead my daughter is being accused of her death, and I'd like to tell you briefly a bit about myself. I have come from a very good upbringing, two very supportive, loving parents who are both alive and in their 90s today and obviously could not be here. Um, there are five of us siblings in my family. Some have passed, some are out of state, so a lot of people are obviously are not here. This has been extremely hard on us all as a whole. Like Lynn, my daughter too is an only child and had a very good upbringing with lots of cousins, aunts, and uncles, and was extremely close with my mother. Lynn and I had known each other for over 30 years and were as close as sisters. The three of us were family. We had been there for each other through thick and thin. I also knew Lynn was a very troubled individual with many demons. Things had gotten worse in 2007. This would be the start of her three-year prison sentence, at which time her father had passed away. In 2010, Lynn was released from prison and had lived with her aunt June until which time she had got on disability and got back on her feet, so to speak. She moved into an apartment in Waukesha 
um, years later began caring for her mother, Lorraine, at her Madison family home. As Lorraine was in need of some help, Lorraine and Lynn did not have a good mother-daughter relationship ever. Things got worse over time until Lorraine's passing in 2013, at which time Lynn asked for my help in assisting her getting things ready for the sale of her parents' home. I spent many days and nights in Madison with Lynn as she was in need of my help and to support her. Lorraine's best friend, Bonnie, and the neighbors were also there to help as well. Lynn was having a very hard time. One night while staying with her in Madison, I awoke at 3 a.m. to Lynn screaming, yelling, and smashing everything in the basement. She was out of control. She said her mom came to her in a dream and spoke to her. Lynn, in her younger days, when I, was, when I first met her, was very much, a, very much a social butterfly. She did love everyone, and she was known to all her friends' kids as Auntie Lenny. We spent every Christmas together, many other holidays, and summers back in the day consisted of boating, paddle boating, swimming, and sand, sand barge parties. Many cookouts, bonfires with the neighborhood lake friends. My boyfriend at the time had lived on the lake across from Lynn. I had best of both worlds. My boyfriend and my best friend living on the same lake. Lynn's parents would come out for the weekend brunches. My boyfriend and I would take them for afternoon pontoon boat rides. Then also threw Jesse's graduation party for her at her lake house with friends and my family. Lynn's birthday week was 626. We would both take off for the whole week, plan our week, swimming, paddle boating, lunches, summer fest, and that was her favorite, which opening day always fell on her birthday. Jesse and I would go camping down the road at a park from Lynn's often. In the summer, she'd always come out, spend a couple hours with us, head back at nightfall, seeing as she wasn't really the camping type of girl. <laughs> But she'd always be back in the a.m. with coffee and breakfast for my daughter and I. Lynn has moved nine times throughout the course of her life, and we have always remained best friends. Never lost touch. Even when in prison, we always wrote each other. When Lynn got out of prison, she was never the same. Something had changed. She was agoraphobic, became very isolated, and suffered from depression. Lynn stated many times of feeling guilt over what she had put her parents through. She lost her father in 2007 when she was going to prison, unable to be there for the funeral and all. Um, that killed her as they were very close. Her mother never let her forget that. Lynn became more isolated, drinking, becoming more dependent on her meds, constantly in and out of the hospital, calling for an ambulance or calling Jesse, Jean, or myself for help in the middle of the night, later refusing help and checking herself out of the hospital refusing to let ambulance take her to the hospital. Lynn was very stubborn. You could not make her do anything that she didn't want to do. The doctors couldn't even help her. The doctors refused to see her anymore because she couldn't pass her PDMP, which is per Prescription Drug Monitoring Program. The doctor felt his license was in jeopardy. When Lynn and I, when Lynn was in need of help or wanted to talk, why is it she only contacted Jesse, Jean, or I. Lynn was all, also listed us as contacts for a disability hospital or in case of emergencies. I didn't find it interesting that the victim and his family were at trial every day, but the victim's family member stated on stand that she clearly was unaware that Lynn was on disability and had state aid health insurance. It was stated that she had no insurance and figured Lynn just wasn't going to seek help for that reason. They clearly were unaware how many times she had been to the doctor or hospital or that she had just checked herself um, in, had been in the hospital and checked herself out right before her death. They didn't even know of her death until we called them. Well, I have come to the realization you cannot help someone who doesn't help themselves. You can only be there for them. I did realize loneliness leads to isolation, depression, heart issues, and death. There are also three lifestyles we all have, public, private, and very secretive. Lynn and I had many conversations at great lengths about her current life status and how she was feeling. I do believe she had a part to play in her mother's death, and I do believe in our many conversations 
This was something she was feeling very responsible for and couldn't live with anymore. Lynn did explain in her letters before her death, I always asked her why she was so down and depressed. Her parents lived good lives and passed away at an old age. She was an only child and was inheriting her whole, the parents' house. She could feel a bit of financial relief and a new start. She could finally relax a bit. Her depression just got worse. The state went into one direction, and that's what they stayed with. Instead of looking into Lynn's past and her own demons, the state got it wrong. Also, John Fry, Lynn's cousin, um, he was not close with Lynn, nor did, she, nor did she have a relationship with him. Lynn was close with John's mother, Aunt June, and lived with her after prison. Lynn did not want us to notify John upon her death. It was given, she gave us specific instructions in her letters. So I don't know why any of this, he had any involvement in this case, nor had he ever met my daughter or I, which I find funny because I had met Aunt June many times and had been out to her house when visiting Lynn. I also had been out to the boathouse in Beulah that she owned back in the day on many occasions with Lynn. But he thought we were strangers upon listening to discovery interrogations. I am no bi biker, nor was I ever, nor was I into drugs, or was I ever, nor is my daughter, or was she ever. So they got that wrong. Lynn, Jesse, and I were not mere acquaintances that Lynn just met and Jesse began caring for. We were family for the record. So please, let's get that straight. Lynn wouldn't have listed us on emergency contacts, accounts, various documents, if she didn't want us on. So please, let's not go there anymore. Her new will was not fabricated or made up. She had changed it under her own, for her own various reasons being. No longer had she seen this individual anymore and not being in her life. I didn't state that. She did. Nor did I or my daughter ask to be any part of this, nor do we want to be. There is one thing I am sure of. Jessie did not kill Lynn, nor would she have taken her life, someone she loved and cared for so much. As Lynn felt the same for her, these two had a bond like no other. I think they were closer than I was with either one of them. Jessie would spend many nights with Lynn as I worked third shift when she was younger. Lynn would plan slumber parties for Jessie and her girlfriends, makeup parties. We would regularly have movie nights. Lynn and Jessie would make all sorts of hors d'oeuvres, snacks. We had a pool in our apartments, and Lynn and I were neighbors. We would spend many days and nights at the pool cookouts. We would pack up our car with snacks and all go looking at Christmas lights around the holidays when she was younger. Lynn would also accompany Jessie on school field trips. At times, she'd bring snacks for all the kids. She was like the Dunn mother. As Jessie was getting older, teen years, Lynn would also do many things with her, without my knowledge or consent, that I definitely would not have consented to. I do not like the fact that detectives and state have tried every angle to implicate myself in this matter, whether it be handwritings or whatever. When I had not been to Lynn's house since July, the last time I saw her or talked to her was in the hospital before she died. I had called many times and spoke with the nurses about her condition. It utterly disgusts me and saddens me that my family's name, credibility, have been tarnished so badly. My daughter and I have been there for her and helped Lynn through so many situations. You have no idea. There was a gag order put on my daughter, the state detectives, and so-called friends and family members who she had a relationship, who she had no relationship with, suddenly decided to speak out to any and all news media outlets that they possibly could. The detectives came to my place of employment, tried to interrogate me while they were with a warrant at my house, turning everything upside down where I had lived. Where... Um, where I had a roommate and her son living, that I was living with. Not to mention, almost one year after Lynn's death, I had already moved out of the old residence, and for what exactly did you think you were going to find there? I don't know. Come to find out, old residence that I had lived at prior for over 30 years, is where I met Lynn, would not renew my lease. 
after I had been there for that long. I can't imagine why detectives went there and talked to them. Um, I have since relocated a few times and have no longer been working. At one point, I actually lived in my car for a couple weeks. They have taken my every reason for living other than I know God. and He doesn't ask us to take of our own lives. Life as I see it will never be the same. We have been called murderers to cat killers. When I had six of my own daughters, okay, and I took Lynn's two in, so they're not murdered and they weren't. Please keep looking forward, please. Cats. They didn't deserve this, and I couldn't leave them with strangers. This isn't the first time Lynn has left her animals for others to care for or pack up her apartment again. I didn't see any other friends or family they're offering to help out with this or much else. As for my daughter's past, it has been brought to light on trial, and we are all aware. She has a gambling problem. Lynn's past was not to be brought up. But with suicide letters given jur to jurors, never read in, how much are we aware of Lynn's past? Most of us are aware of CCAP, and we are all aware of how it works. We all have a past, some not as bad as others. With that being said, as Lynn used to say, you can't con a con. So take a look and decide for yourselves. Okay? I, can, at, I can actually mention now, at age 26, Lynn was involved in armed robberies, fire, five prior DUIs, money theft and meds. She was um, let go of her employment that she stole out of her manager's, um, stole from her manager out of her purse. She had been behind and had to move numerous times because she was behind on rent and she wasn't, uh, never really worked a full-time job at the salon. It was usually three nights a week and a few, for a few hours. Um, I would just like to thank everybody for their time on this. And I would like to say one other additional thing, that the conduct I deserved in this, or that I observed in this courtroom during trial was most appalling and disturbing to say the least. And it doesn't give me much hope in our system. And I'm sure you all know who you are. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Ms. Flowers, was there anything you wanted to say about your daughter's character and what this court should consider at sentencing? Um, or have you finished your statement? I, I do believe that um, I would hope, you know, I, I don't believe in, that she's guilty. So this is very, it has been very hard for me. I do not believe that she killed her. I do believe for various reasons that my girlfriend took her own life and she has a record to show it. And um, I would hope that I, you know, I'm leaving it to you to look into this and give it your deepest sympathy and thoughts on this matter and taking it into consideration when making that decision. Thank you. Attorney Jones, is there anyone else on behalf of Ms. Kershevsky, excuse me, Kershevsky who would like to make a statement? No, Your Honor. I believe